in the last stream, we were working, of course, on our new blast furnaces, which we now have here and here, which are now allowing us to uh, more easily and more quickly make the uh, refined steel ingots that apparently we're going to need quite a few of going forward to make, uh, you know, all of the uh, items required to complete the quests uh, in this advancement page here. So between streams, I have gone ahead and moved the distiller. I've kind of hidden it back uh, in here because what I want to do today is I want to start putting some machines into this wall specifically. I think I want to start at least by looking to automate the production of circuits, the ones we made quite a few of in the uh, the last episode, these ones right here. And uh, by extension, we'll probably also look at automating advanced circuits and uh, and then maybe even you know a few of the parts as well required uh, to make those advanced circuits because they needed a lot going forward. If we look at, uh, for example, you know the overclockers, which I'd like to get a few of uh, today to speed up some of our machines, they all require electronic circuits. You can put, um, I think, up to four overclockers in every machine and so if we're going to you know really speed up our machines we're going to need a ton of electronic circuits there um, if we look forward at some of the future quests this one here wants us to make a fusion computer which is this guy right here uh, the recipe here requires some energy flow circuits which each require you know four uh, advanced circuits and then obviously they require uh, regular circuits on top of that uh, so those are quite expensive i've been told that we're going to need a bunch of these fusion coils these are just a nightmare recipe they require a ton more of these energy flow circuits which again more regular circuits and there's just a ton of circuits to be crafted kind of all the way down here and so i think it's probably going to be a good idea if we look to automate those and also if we just look to automate some of the other uh, recipes that we've been making a lot manually up until now so to do that i really think we're going to have to expand our applied energistics 2 system right now we have one controller which is kind of fine because uh you know it can hold up to uh, 32 channels on each side if you get the dense cable uh, and therefore you know with uh, six sides there it can hold up to 192 channels in total however i think what i'm probably going to do for two reasons one because we need more channels not that 192 necessarily but we do need more channels than we have access to right now uh, and two because it looks good is i think i'm going to set up a multi-block me controller and i think i'm going to do it like right here so the maximum size that you can set up a controller is seven by seven by seven and as luck would have it this like area here if we start right there is one two three four five six and then the bottom one there will be seven so i think i'm going to have a seven by seven by seven by seven cube kind of in this area where the arc furnace is it does mean i'm gonna have to move the uh the arc furnace somewhere else i don't know if we need the arc furnace a ton going forward especially now that we're making those refined steel ingots in the blast furnace and I also, by the way, don't think we're going to get the whole 7x7x7 machine up today simply due uh, to the large number of um, Fluix crystals required to set that up. But I think we can start at least by making a few of them and then using those to kind of hook up some new auto crafting uh, down here. Uh, not only in the form of machines, but we'll also look at uh, probably getting uh, some more of the old uh, ME interfaces and molecular assemblers. These guys right here, I'll probably move this one uh, downstairs, kind of embed that in the wall. Uh, maybe like back here, maybe we'll have like a bunch of those kind of embedded in the wall back here. I think that could look pretty cool. So yeah, that's kind of the plan. So if we want to make more Emmy controllers, which I will go ahead and uh, bookmark real quick, we're going to need some more Skystone blocks. I think we do have a good number of Flux crystals. Yeah, we've got uh, like 36 right there, plus five more there. And then uh, I do also believe we have quite a lot of uh, processes available. We do. We will probably also look at automating these today because again, if we're going to expand out our A2 system, if we're going to be making a lot of ME interfaces and molecular assemblers and cables and, you know, patterns and all this stuff, we're probably going to want to be able to just request these processes instead of having to manually craft them over and over and over again. Uh, so we'll look at automating those as well. But uh, for now, I think all we really need is more Skystone blocks. And for that, we just need more Ender Air bottles. So let's get some bottles. Actually, we already have some Ender Air bottles, but let's get uh, a few more if we can. And uh, I think all we have to do is just, yeah, right-click these on the uh, the floor because, of course, uh, we're already here in the end. And so uh, we'll take quite, we'll take as many of those as we uh, possibly can, and then we'll craft those up with the old uh, stone to hopefully get us a good amount of uh, sky stone. And then from there, all we have to do is, uh, is smelt it. And that's probably something else I'd like to do, honestly. I think I'm going to keep these machines here for kind of general purpose use, and the same is true um, over here as well. But I think... What we should probably do is look at making a, a second sag mill, a second alloy smelter, um, and, you know, maybe like a second induction smelter, and almost certainly a second mechanical squeezer, just so we can have 
like automated machines, right? Certain things that we want to be able to, to automate the smelting of, for example, sap. If we're going to automate circuits, we're going to have to automate the smelting of sap. If we're going to do that, uh, it would make sense to maybe get another alloy smelter, but maybe we could also do it uh, with like an electric furnace or, or something along those lines. But uh, I think we should definitely get duplicates of some of these machines for uh, for auto crafting purposes. So I'm thinking, yeah, basically we're just going to have the ME controller be like a big multi-block over here. And we will, of course, have to uh, pick up the current ME controller that's upstairs and move that down here as well. But that shouldn't be uh, shouldn't be too difficult. And then, of course, we can hook that up to here. We're probably also going to want to start looking at uh, replacing at least some of our uh, cable with dense cable. You know, right now we're using regular cable kind of all over the place, but dense cable uh, does give us up to 32 channels per uh, connection. And also it means you can you know transfer 32 channels without having to run multiple cables in a uh, in a certain direction. Let's think about how we want to do this chat, because right now we have uh, one controller, of course, up here. I think what I'm probably going to do. Hmm. I'm just thinking that right now this guy's got quite a lot of stuff connected to him. And how do we connect all of this up uh, easily is my uh, is my concern. We do, of course, have cabling running through the floor up you know, to the current controller. And I don't think we're using more than 32 channels on this current controller. So I think what we could probably do, it would require a ton of dense cable. But if we get dense cable, then we could probably run that dense cable in the wall. Like right now, if we uh, if we look, um, I originally had the cable in here. But unfortunately, when you uh, try and use the mineral wood facades, they don't like line up correctly, if that makes sense. Like if I grab some cable here, I'll show you what I mean. Originally, we had this running up and I was going to cover up the mineral wood but the manual wood gets placed down in the wrong direction and i don't know if there's a way to to change that so i couldn't uh, i couldn't you know run the cable through this wall and uh, instead i ended up running the cable over here so now the cable kind of goes you know from the controller over there through the roof across down here under the floor and you can see here we've got uh, in the top left there we've got cable facades uh, they go all the way along they connect up there and then they go down you know here to the controller so i think P2P is actually a fantastic idea, yeah. So what we can do is we can uh, utilize our good old friend, the P2P tunnel. That is very sensible, actually, instead of running dense cable all the way up there. So if we make another two P2P tunnels, this time we're going to keep them as ME tunnels instead of crafting them into power tunnels. And we'll also grab the, uh, the old memory card as well. What we should be able to do is we should be able to kind of come over to the bottom of this controller which is uh, apparently easier said than done and also let's uh, let's not use wood that's kind of hard to break let's use cobblestone and let's also re-equip our ring there so essentially if we put down one p2p tunnel here like that we're going to get rid of that controller and then we're going to go and connect that up somewhere over here right so if for example we connected that up Let's say, let's say we get rid of this and let's say we put the P2P tunnel here. I think what we can then do, because the P2P tunnels can carry up to 32 channels, is we can remove the old controller. And swap that out for... I guess we want to swap that out for a dense cable, right? If we can. Like that. What we can then do is, uh, and actually, again, hold on, let me <laughs> break this once more, uh, because we could also do with some of the quartz fiber. So quartz fiber is, of course, used in the making of cable, but it also allows you to transfer power without transferring channels, right? Because here, we're essentially replacing that controller with this uh, this dense cable. What we can then do is we can then do something like this and like... I guess we'll do this as well here. And then if we connect that up, 
which is easier said than done now because I've just gotten rid of my freaking uh, my thing. We'll do this for now. Uh, that should allow the power from the main network to be transferred up to this network without actually transferring any channels, if that makes sense. And then down here, all we need to do now is actually connect this guy up with power. We do, of course, also have to use the old memory card here. Uh, this time around, I believe we're only, we want to shift right click here and then right click here. Okay, so this now has power separate from the power coming from the controller, which is good. So what we should hopefully be able to do, chat, is we should hopefully now be able to get rid of this controller right here, replace that with a dense cable, like so, give that dense cable power via these quartz fibers, like so, and hopefully the P2P tunnels are already online, and also we can uh, reconnect this one in a second as well. I do see it says device offline. Let me go see if I can uh, rectify that. Why is that device? Oh, it's because uh, the actual, yes, okay. The actual cable itself also needs a, uh, a channel. Which for now we'll just do like this. That should work. That should bring this guy online, device online, perfect. And uh, hopefully, it brings everything else online. All right. Okay, so this is now connected. We're back online. So I'll do a quick recap here because that took way too much time and was a little confusing. So basically what we have is we're using this as our main controller now. So each and every side of this controller can be connected um, with cable, right? If you use regular cable, you can get eight channels per side. If you use dense cable, you can use up to 32 channels per side. Because our P2P tunnel here is connected to directly to the ME controller, it can take all those 32 channels and basically uh, kind of pop them out over at the top here, much like with power, right? So like up in the basement, not the Britannia area, I wanna be in the basement. Up here, we have all the power from the energy cell and therefore from the diesel generator by extension going into the P2P tunnel and then coming out in the overworld. Here, we have 32 channels going into this P2P tunnel, we then use one channel or two channels because each P2P tunnel does in and of itself require a channel. So that, and that's using it like over here. So if we were to put a smart cable here, we'd see it using two channels. But here we have 32 channels from this face of the controller going into the P2P tunnel and then being sent all the way up to here. So this uh, P2P tunnel here then spits out those 32 channels. You can see right now we're using 16 of them with this, uh, this dense smart cable. So that's how that's working. We're basically just using P2P tunnels to uh, not have to run dense cable from here to there. We're using the P2P tunnels instead. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, for now though, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna throw down uh, this guy right here, kind of fully completing uh, this first ring. Like I say, I think we can, if we want, we can go deeper than this. We can make like a full uh, kind of seven by seven by seven uh, cube instead of this kind of square that we have right now. Uh, which I think we might do in the future. And I think I definitely am going to move the uh, the arc furnace because right now uh, it just looks a little janky. Um, but, but for the time being, this will be more than enough channels to get us started. So let's go ahead and first of all, get rid of this guy. And then re-hook up these guys. Uh, which for now, we might as well do just like that. And then let's look finally at uh, getting some machine automation, shall we? So, like I said, I think I want to start by seeing if we can't automate the crafting of circuits. So let me go ahead and bookmark these uh, Tech Reborn circuits right here. And I think we're gonna automate them, of course, in the assembling machine. I think we're done, hopefully, with the assembler here. Uh, the assembler is not terrible, but it's a little more tricky to automate. And uh, by the looks of it, it's actually cheaper to make the circuits with the assembly machine than it is uh, with, the, uh, with the assembler. So, uh, I have, between streams, gone ahead and manually crafted with the assembler some more of these electronic circuits. And in fact, I do believe that uh, if I were to uh, take these out and re-put them back in, we do have enough to make a few more of these circuits as well. So uh, I want to try and get, to start with, I think two assembly machines, because if we look at the recipe for the electronic circuit, you'll see that it requires three insulated copper cable and one basic control circuit. The basic control circuit in and of itself is also made in the assembly machine. And so I think 
we probably want to have two assembly machines, one for making basic control circuits and one for making electronic circuits. You can, if you want, do uh, both of these in one machine. Uh, but if we look at the time here, you'll see it takes over a minute to make each circuit and another, I think, 40 seconds or about 40 seconds to make, yeah, this circuit here. So in total, two minutes to make uh, one circuit doing it in one machine, right? You'd have to wait for the first one, then do the second one. Uh, I think it's gonna be a lot faster going forward to have one machine for each of these. We do also have to automate, of course, the production of uh, insulated copper cables, but that shouldn't be too difficult. And we also have to automate the production of plates, which we could do using our pre-existing metal press. But I think uh, I'm a lot more inclined to instead make the plates bending machine from Tech Reborn, just because, again, we can put overclocking upgrades in it, we can make it faster, uh, and it just takes up a lot less space than the metal press does. And it doesn't mean it means we don't have to run uh, ME cabling all the way out and over to the metal press when there isn't really any cabling uh, over there at the moment. So let's see if we can create, or if we can craft, I should say, two assembly machines and one plate machine. I don't think either of these are going to be too bad for us now. Mostly, I think it's just refined steel and circuits. Yeah, so we need a few pistons here, which are completely fine. And then from that point on, we just need some refined steel plates to make the assembly machines, uh, of course, as well as a couple of those uh, basic machine frames. Uh, I do believe we have well over 100 refined steel. Yeah, we've got 143. And of course, we do now have the ability uh, to make even more uh, by just throwing a ton of iron ore into there. That's going to allow us to get even more. Uh, and you know what? We'll go ahead and throw some slag into here as well, just to keep that going. Uh, I do think that we should look, at, like I mentioned before, at getting slag automated today as well, if possible, but uh, we'll see. So this guy here does require two compressors. Again, I think we made these before uh, in the last stream. They're really not too bad, especially once you have all of the uh, refined iron ready to go. We just need a control circuit and some stone. And from there, that should be pretty much everything for the, uh, the plate bending machine. Nice. So let's grab, I guess, six refined steel. And for what might be the last time, let's head on over and turn those into plates in the old metal press here. So once you have those plates, that should be, I think, pretty much everything for two assembly machines. It is. Nice. So uh, I am going to grab my wrench real quick just to make sure I don't accidentally uh, pick one of these machines up without the wrench because that would uh, destroy it. Let's put these down over here. And I think we're going to have the two assembly machines kind of next to each other like this and then the plate bending machine right there. And we could always add more machines kind of along the wall here as time goes on. Now, to actually autocraft with these, we're going to have to do a few things. First, we're going to have to make some interfaces. We need one per machine. We'll put these here, here, and here. We're, of course, going to have to uh, connect that up with ME cable and also connect these guys up with power, which should be, uh, I think, fairly easy. We do already have an energy conduit hooked up to a P2P tunnel right there, so running that over shouldn't take too long. And then from there, we actually have to do the uh, the patterns, right? So uh, if we head on back up to central, to our crafting terminal, let's see if we can't make some blank patterns here. Preferably more than uh, more than one. It's just quartz glass that we're missing. That is actually fine. 11 should do for now. And then in order to actually auto-craft with a machine, we need to click this button up here uh, to change it from a crafting pattern over to a processing pattern. And so the first one that we're going to do, I guess, is the basic control circuit. So this, actually, I guess the first ones we should do should probably be uh, the electron plates and the refined steel plates. And again, I think we are going to use refined steel plates over aluminum plates because now we can make refined steel uh, just from iron ore, which we have in abundance. So uh, electron plates, we can uh, go over to the plate binding machine. We can shift click on move items and then click encode. That is good to go. And then we can do the exact same thing over here with refined steel. Shift click that in and encode. And then if we put both of those into the interface on top of the plate bender, they should be ready to go when we hook those up. Next up, what else do we have? We also have to teach it how to make this guy here, which again, shift right click should be fairly easy to do. And after that, we need to teach it to make the actual circuit itself, like so. And I guess finally, we need to teach it how to make insulated copper cable, but that is not a machine recipe. That is a regular crafting recipe. And although up until now, we've been using this recipe here, I think going forward, we might use this recipe here. It's a little bit more convoluted in that we do first have to craft our copper ingots into copper cable and then into, into insulated cable, but it does mean that we can craft individual cable at a time as opposed to having to craft six at a time. 
uh, which I think is probably good in the uh, in the long run. So we'll teach it that recipe, and then we'll also teach it that recipe in code. Uh, for now, I'm going to put those in over here. But again, I will be moving this downstairs, I think, very soon. And then if we put in over here, we'll have the first assembly machine making the basic circuits and then the other machine making the uh, actual electric circuits. That should be pretty much good to go. So these should now be online, I would hope. And uh, we can check that, I guess, by typing in a circuit in here. We do have the option to make both of these. Now, I believe we do have to do some configuring first. Uh, if we click the configure slots, we want to make sure that the left and right slot can input from the top. And then we want to make sure that the middle slot also outputs to the top. So this one here, we want to uh, change to orange and we want to tick auto output. That way, the ME interface is going to insert the ingredients on the left and the right hand side. Uh, for example, the basic control circuit and the insulated copper cable is going to make the electronic circuit, which is then going to be auto ejected through the top. And so I believe we want to do that on, on each side here. We want to make sure that the uh, left and the right are set to blue. And then the top is set to orange or the middle, sorry, is set to orange and auto output. Okay, so I think that should work. Let's give it a try. Let's see if we can't request a, uh, a regular circuit. We'll go for the whole thing. We'll see if we can't request, you know, let's see if we can request like five regular circuits. Okay, so we need electrum ingots and we need rubber. Mm, that makes a lot of sense. We are gonna have to automate the, uh, the production of electrum uh, and the production of rubber. So I think what we will probably do is two things. I think one, an electric furnace, I think is gonna make a lot of sense here. It's a very easy recipe. And if we throw that down, just like right about here, we can do the exact same thing we've been doing with everything else. We can set the bottom at the top there to uh, input and we can set the right hand side to output, auto output. And then if we put an interface on top of there, anytime that we need to uh, smelt something or anytime that we need to have something automatically smelted, uh, we can just put a new pattern into here and have this electric furnace do it. I don't know if it's gonna be super fast by default, but uh, the overclockers uh, do make this machine quite quick. So uh, hopefully we can add that and make it faster in the future. And then as far as the alloys go, I think really we only have two options and those options are either the alloy smelter or the induction smelter, I think. Oh no, there is an alloy smelter from Tech Reborn, which I might make honestly. Two electric furnaces. Yeah, that seems very doable. And there we go. Nice. Okay, so we'll throw that down uh, right about there. And again, we're going to need to get another uh, interface here. Which does require some more formation and uh, and annihilation cores, which of course requires uh, yet more fluix dust, which we can of course get with our end-to-io machines. So let's do... Formation core, annihilation core, and interface, perfect. So this guy, we need to teach it how to make Electrum. And I should probably get a crafting, uh, a pattern terminal even, uh, like closer to uh, to home. You also don't, you, you, you hate to see it. Why are you offline? Is it a channel issue? It's probably a channel issue, chat. So that's where what we need to do is we need to make sure that uh, these are on separate channels here, I think. So we'll disconnect these and then reconnect these up over here. But this is where it becomes, you know, useful to have so many controllers available. Yeah, because we've put them down, uh, put them down, because we've placed down so many interfaces over there, you know, we've got what, five? That takes up five of the eight channels. Uh, and then we also have, you know, more, we've got the P2P tunnel and we've got the other P2P tunnel. So we very quickly there saturated all of the uh, available channels. Uh, moving that wire there should now mean that we have a connection up top again. We do, nice, okay. So, Electrum ingot. That should be a fairly easy alloy smelt recipe. It is. We are very low on silver, I think. We've got the uh, the silver ore here, but we don't have uh, a lot of like actual silver ingots. I should go take a look in the uh, the overworld. At what level 
Do we get silver ore in the overworld? Silver ore. We do. Nice. Okay, so we should have some silver ore from our tier 2 miner. I was a little worried that the only source of silver might be from the um, the nether orchid, at which point we could we would very much so be in, uh, in trouble. Uh, for now, though, we seem to be fine. And so we should just be able to throw that electrum ingot over into this uh, alloy interface right there. And then at that point, I think it's just the rubber that we're missing, which I'll come back to in a second. But let's see if we can't request. Again, let's try five circuits. It all seems doable. It only takes 310 bytes, so we can do it in the pre-existing uh, crafting CPU. If we click start, there we go. So now we see the uh, Electrum being made. Again, fairly slowly, but hopefully we're going to get some overclock upgrades very soon here. That is then being turned into plates. Fantastic. Those plates are then being used in the uh, assembly machine. Yep. Those are take, It takes 40 seconds, so it does take a while to make the, uh, the basic control circuit. Uh, but once we have one, that should then be sent over and be turned into a, uh, a regular control circuit. So this is now automated, and by the looks of it, it is working. However, as you can see, it's very, very, very slow. So we should look at getting overclocker upgrades. So overclocker upgrades. These are pretty easy to make. They're made with insulated copper wire, which we've automated. They're made with electronic circuits, which we've also automated, and then 10K coolant cells, which we've yet to automate. But we probably could. Uh, do you need to automate it? How many overclocker upgrades are you aiming to make? Mm, that's also a good point. Um, maybe we don't need to automate it. Let's have a look. Yeah, probably not, right? Yeah, okay. So the empty cells are easy enough to make. They're just uh, tin and glass. And then if we run those through... Actually, I, I maybe shouldn't do it in here because this one is uh, already being used for the, uh, the potion generator there. The potion generator, of course, not really doing anything at the moment, but uh, nevertheless, let's get another ender tank. And we'll, uh, we'll hook that up for now, just like right about there. That should fill up nice and quickly. And then uh, if we just throw in the 63 empty cells, that should hopefully slowly but surely get us the more water cells that we need to make the uh, the overclocker upgrades. Uh, we can craft those with more tin to get us more 10k coolant cells. And from there, we can then craft those up with uh, the copper cable and the electronic circuits to get even more of the upgrades. Nice. So let's see just how good these are. Over here, uh, I put all those in, I guess. I didn't know you could just right-click to put them all in, but uh, apparently you can. Let's see if we can't make... Uh, again, I don't know how much more power these use. But I think I'm going to try and make, you know, overclock upgrades for all of these machines. And to do that, we are going to need more circuits, because each one does require a circuit. So let's request, like, another 32 of these. At that point, it's going to... Yeah, that's going to run us into the rubber issue. So... I think what we want to do, again, in uh, we're kind of working backwards here to automate everything. Um, I think we want to run item conduits from these chests here over to our storage drawer to begin, or over to our uh, drawer slave here, to be able to continually import sap, wood, and leaves. And then from there, we can teach our system how to turn that sap and that wood into, uh, into rubber. So let me get some item conduits. We could also, of course, put uh, import buses here. And in fact, we do have like a, a chest right here, right? Yeah. So what I might do actually is I might just run item conduits over to this chest and kind of have these hooked up to the same network where they get pulled in to this chest and then through the import bus uh, into the system. I think I might make life a little easier. Something like that. And then just make sure all of these are set to uh, extract always active. That should empty those out, and that should mean that we have, like, a nice supply going forward of rubber. And as people have pointed out in the Twitch chat, what we can do, and I will make, uh, you know, facades to cover them up uh, in the future, but what we can do for now is we can get an, uh, an extractor. Again, another machine from Tech Reborn, this guy right here, uh, that's going to allow us to get more uh, rubber from our sap. So if we look at the uh, the sap here, which is going up, which is good, uh, and we look at the recipe, one sap equals one rubber in a furnace. However, in the extractor, uh, one sap equals three rubber. And on top of that, we can also use our uh, wood in the extractor as well to get uh, rubber if we need it. I don't think we're going to need it yet, but uh, it's always an option, right? If we need a lot of it going forward, we could pivot over and uh, try using that. 
For now, though, let's see if we can't make an uh, extractor, which, again, I think we should be able to do. The tree taps are, uh, are very cheap. Unfortunately, they don't stack. And then everything else should be things that we already have lying around. They are indeed. Good stuff. We'll throw that down. You guessed it. Right about there with, you guessed it, yet another ME interface. Again, we do have to worry about channels a little bit here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we have the P2P toll, which is seven. So I think we're at seven out of eight channels on that uh, on that line there. Of course, we could upgrade that um, with some kind of uh, dense cable or with some kind of P2P tunnel, but I don't really want to get into the realm of, uh, you know, P2P tunnels inside P2P tunnels, and you get into kind of some P2P tunnel section there, which is a little a little uh, bizarre. But this should be fine. Again, we've got to make sure, before I forget, to set the top there to, you guessed it, input, and the right to auto output. Perfect. And then, for what I think will be the last time for this recipe, at least, we're going to go and we're going to teach this guy how to turn sap into... Bubba. Encode. All right. And at that point, we should now have everything it takes to uh, request like 32 or even 64 circuits. Like if I wanted a stack of circuits, how hard is that? We're just missing silver at that point, which is something we can work on in a second. For now, I'll request 32 of these because it looks like we do have enough for that. Start. Perfect. While that's doing that, let's continue to make more overclock upgrades to make the whole thing faster. Let's have a look here. So this one, if I take out these overclock upgrades and I put them in like over here, it's quite fast, eh? And then if I do the same here, put those in. Oh yeah, look, it's actually like instant. If you have all the overclock upgrades, that is surprising. I did not expect it to be anywhere near that fast. I think we are wasting power here by moving them around so much. But if I was to put these in like here, oh yeah, look at that. Look at that chat. If you've got five or four overclockers in the machines, I don't know how much power they're using. I assume probably quite a bit. But they really do start to uh, to tank through the like the recipes that they have to do here, which is super nice. Of course, in an ideal world, we'd have all these in uh, each machine, but that's kind of what we're working on here, right? Like as soon as this is uh, is done, we should then be able to uh, grab some more insulated cable, and uh, and from there put overclock upgrades into all of these. Nice. Okay, I think we're done. We are done. Perfect. So I do need more uh, copper cable, which again, at this point in time, I might as well go ahead and just request. Can I get 100? I can get 100. Okay, give me 100 copper cable, please. And uh, I will assist you in that via this recipe here. And uh, hopefully at that point, as that starts to come in, perfect, we can then begin uh, crafting up more overclock upgrades to put in all of our uh, all of our machines. We've got 32 uh, circuits now. Fantastic. Oh, yeah, there we go. There we go, chat. So now we can really start to uh, to fill these guys up. Again, we'll start with the ones that are the slowest, which are these two. And then from there, I guess we'll go alloy smelter and rolling machine. And we're only four away from the electronic furnace. Nice. I guess they only stack in, uh, in lots of 16. And if we can, I might as well, I guess, go ahead and uh, I guess we're out of... Oh, never mind. We've got enough, uh, enough water coolant for everyone. Can we make eight more? We can make 16 more. Perfect. I feel like we might as well throw in here and here. Look at that chat. Look at the speed at which you get the, the refined steel there. That's very nice. Very, very nice. And again, these are coming in faster as well. The power was holding it like it was dipping a second there. I'm not quite sure if that's going to, like, be an issue for us. I hope it's not. But, yeah, that is a lot more refined steel coming in, which is very nice indeed. And there we go. So we should now basically have those circuits automated. Um, we should probably, though, also look at uh, automating... That's not the right cobblestone, Isaac. We need uh, these ones. Uh, we should probably also look at getting the advanced circuits as well. So let's see, do we have what it takes to, uh, I guess, easily get the uh, advanced circuits? The advanced circuits are a little trickier. They're made with advanced circuit boards and advanced circuit parts. The advanced circuit boards are made with regular circuits and electrums. So that seems doable. We'll encode that. And then as for the advanced circuit parts, those are also made in the assembly machine with glowstone and lapis. Okay, we'll encode that as well. Now... The question then becomes, which of these machines do I want to put these in? And are we going to run into any issues here? 
I don't think we are. I think we can probably put the advanced part in here and the advanced circuit. Maybe it kind of feels like that should be in there. We do also actually need the actual like recipe for the final circuit itself. That being that one there. Which we would put in here. We can put this in here as well. I'm a little concerned though that if we do large autocrafts, it might try and mix and match these. Like it might end up putting, uh, you know, like this one requires two electron plates and refined steel, and this one requires two, uh, two electron plates and an electronic circuit. I'm a little concerned that it might end up just putting like electrum in each side and not working quite well. I don't know if that's going to happen. The machines might be smart enough to not do that. But I guess we'll see. How much glowstone do we have? We have one glowstone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, are we getting... My first question is, are we getting glowstone like from anywhere right now? I don't think we are, right? Oh, no, we are. We're getting it from the Void All Miner. So, we are getting glowstone from the overworld. The question really becomes, are we getting enough glowstone from the overworld? We do have 51 here. And you can run each of those through, you know, any range of machines to get uh, to get four glowstone dust uh, the question really becomes do we need to set up uh, like a mana system in order to get more glowstone because of course we can if we want set up a system like what we've done over here with sand and gravel but instead of using the um the alchemy catalyst instead we use the uh, the duplication catalyst or the conjures catalyst the one that we have uh, under here i think we'll set it up let's have a look do we have a spare draw in here we do not, but we can probably make one fairly easily. Um, I think what I might do, actually, is I might just set it up, like, right here. Of course, we need another, another mana pool because we have to get another catalyst, but I think we can just add a glowstone draw to the end of this kind of setup here. Um, excuse me, that is not at all what I want to happen. Let me uh, cover that up. I was not aware that storage draws could burn. Do these, like, actually disappear if they burn? How has that not happened already? Uh, chat, do make a good point in that we can use a compacting draw, which is something I've not used at all uh, in our playthrough so far, but we can use compacting draws uh, for the glowstone. And the benefit of that is that when we go and begin uh, importing this glowstone over here, that should kind of register the glowstone in dust form as well. I'll be able to convert it, I guess. Yeah, you can see that it comes in block form, dust form, and also in uh, tiny dust form. So now when we type in glowstone, you can see all three are there. Um, I'm a little dubious. People have recommended using quite a lot of, um, of compacting draws. Uh, the reason I've not made so many is that uh, I think sometimes they can kind of mess with your auto crafting a little bit uh, because for example if i was to replace my uh, iron ingot here with a compacting draw uh, the system kind of thinks you have a lot more iron than you do like right now i think the system thinks that i have 816 small piles of glowstone and 205 regular glowstone and 54 glowstone blocks which i don't uh, and so that can cause i believe some issues with auto crafting when you try and uh, try and use that so i think where possible i'm i'm not going to be using a ton of compacting draws uh, but i think for now this is actually fine so what I'm probably going to do is essentially put down, I'm going to move the duplication catalyst for now. And we're going to put that under a new mana pool over here. And I think essentially all we're going to do here is we're going to get another, uh, another crate, which I might already have. I don't. We can make another one of those uh, fairly easy. And uh, the good news is that we can actually just tap into this pre-existing item conduit, of course, uh, if we do something like this and this. We can, uh, again, use the uh, level emitter on this cable. We're going to disconnect this one, of course. But uh, here we can go extract active with signal. And we'll do that on the red channel. And then over here, we'll go insert on the red channel. So that way we can carry both items across the same channel, but we don't across the same item conduit. Uh, but they don't uh, interfere with one another, which is always good. There we go. So uh, let's go and get another mana pool. And we'll throw that down for now right here on top of, of course, the conjures catalyst, like so. Uh, we do need another spark, which should be doable. It is. And then from there, we also need to give that spark the uh, dominant augment which does require one pixie dust which really is just a mana pearl 
Beautiful. Okay, so that should be another dominant spark taken care of. And we'll throw that in over here. There we go. That's going to start pulling mana from those pools again. You love to see it. And yeah, if we get another Emmy level emitter. And this time we put this one down right about here. We can do basically the same thing we've been doing before. We take the glowstone and we say emit a signal when below. And let's say 512 glowstone dust. How much do we have right now? Not 512. So, oh gosh, uh, turn this off for a second. We need to uh, whitelist. See, this is the problem with uh, with using the <laughs> the blocks. Uh, we need to get a filter because we need to pull out just glowstone dust and not glowstone blocks. So in here, we'll go filter on the extract side, configure that, and then whitelist glowstone. So now when we turn this back to active with signal, we should see the amount of glowstone we have going up. My only concern here, really, in using Batania for this is that uh, we might just not have enough mana. I think, given that we've added another pool, it's probably about time that we add... And I should be very cautious about which petals I'm using there, because I think I just used the last of our white-blue petals when we have 46 black petals. Uh, but I think we should be using, you know, all of these mana pools. Not just these two, we should be using all four now to pull over into here. But this seems to be okay. Look, we've got 405 uh, glowstone there. Uh, we didn't lock the draw, so we've run into a, a slight issue. But one that is very easily resolved. And there we go. Nice. So we've got 521. The system turns off. If we grab, you know, a few glowstone dust, the system turns back on and makes us more glowstone. Nice. Of course, this system does only work if we actually have glowstone always in this compacting drawer. Uh, so I think it is possible that system kind of uh, might break down at some point, but uh, for now we'll assume it's going to work and, uh, you know, fix it if it needs fixing in the future. Um, but let's see though, do we have what it takes now to request advanced circuits? If I want 10 of those, can I do that? It looks like I can. If I click start, the machines get going and because of their uh, overclock upgrades, they're going, they get going very quickly. People did point out to me that uh, we should change this recipe actually. The recipe here is using, uh, you know, regular control circuits. We should change that. That did work, and it was quite fast. Uh, but if we look at the recipe again for advanced circuit boards, you can make these with more electrum and a silicon plate to get two advanced circuit boards. And the silicon plate is just silicon in the plate bending machine. The question though becomes, I guess, like how do we want to go about getting silicon? Up until now, we've been putting like sand into the sag mill, which does work, but the chances are not super high. And when you start playing with probability, things like the like auto crafting can get a bit janky, right? Because like trying to teach our system how to make silicon when it's not guaranteed. We could, for example, teach it that putting 10 sand into the sag mill gets you one silicon because most of the time that would be true, but there are all, like, eventually, there could come a time where we put 10 sand in and we don't get a single piece of silicon and the whole system kind of breaks down, right? So I don't know if there's, like, a, a more guaranteed way of doing it. It looks like you can with the electric arc furnace. I don't know if that's automatable or not. We could do, yeah, we could do what we've done with some other uh, items and keep stock of it. Essentially, we kind of continuously always pump sand into the sag mill until we have um, a stack of silicon. And then, like, once we have, you know, more than 64 or even, you know, 128 uh, silicon ingots, then we stop running the, uh, the sand over there. That's probably a good idea. It does kind of lead me on to uh, the automation I wanted to do around the, uh, the slag, right? Like, up until now, we've been uh, manually putting slag into our blast furnace. And I did mention... In the last stream, uh, utilizing the induction smelter to make slag with cobblestone and sand. If we're going to do that, we probably want to get a better source of sand. And we probably could have done this. Like We probably could have gotten rid of, actually, uh, the sand draw here. Because I think going forward, we don't want to be making sand with this, um, this system. 
Because if we're going to be using sand to make slag, and if we're going to be using sand uh, to make silicon, and if we're going to be using sand to make glass and all the other things that sand is already used for, uh, I think we're going to start to really tax our mana system right here, which right now I will remind you is just like 10 endo flames. That's what's powering this setup over here. Uh, you know, all this stuff is currently not uh, not running on on you know this network. And so I think we probably want to look at getting the uh, the classic deposition upgrade. This guy right here for the Ignis Extruder. This allows you to make sand out of lava and water, but it doesn't actually use any lava. It just uses water. So basically, you just turn water and power into sand. Now, the upgrade itself is quite pricey, mostly in the fact that it requires the, uh, this erothium dust. The lead, the nickel, and the redstone conductors color are not too bad. But the erothium dust is a little dicey because we need to... I think the only way for us to make it is with nitre and liquid XP in a fluid transposer. Nitre you can get by pulverizing sand or by sag milling sand. And then uh, liquid XP you can get uh, by pulling it out of yourself, potentially with the uh, the Tome of Knowledge from uh, Thermal Expansion. I don't think we have like an XP drain. Again, we don't have uh, random things or, or open blocks. So uh, I think the easiest way... Or, or the only way maybe of getting XP out of us might be the uh, the Tomb of Knowledge here, which thankfully isn't too expensive. Uh, and you can use this to just uh, right-click and, uh, and pull experience out of you. And of course, given that we have uh, 22,000 extra terrestrial matter, uh, we can very easily get a, a bunch of uh, levels into the Tome here. From there, though, we do have to get a, a fluid transposer. Which shouldn't be too difficult, actually, now that we have a couple of industrial machine chassis lying around. Yeah, it's not too bad whatsoever. Isaac of the Past did make uh, kind of a backlog of, of copper gears, so we have those ready to go. And then uh, from there, if we're going to make the blizz powder, we just need nitre, which is just the uh, sand. Is it sandstone or sand in the sag mill? Let me check that real quick. It is sandstone, which is completely fine and very, uh, very craftable. There we go. Okay, so what do we have for Nitre? I think we're pretty much there. Uh, let me see. I think I'm temporarily going to move the Slice and Splice just to, to throw this guy down. So I don't... Oh, no, we can. We can take this guy, turn this on, uh, and therefore move the experience in. Perfect. A thousand millibook is actually more than enough. And then if we put the Nitre in and switch this back to Fill Mode, that should hopefully very, very slowly uh, get us to Blizz Powder. Yeah, that's actually fine. It's only 200 millibuckets per uh, bliss powder. We only need two bliss powder to get two uh, erothium dust, and we only need one erothium dust uh, to get our job done. So that is actually fine. That was a lot less difficult than I thought it would be. Perfect. Okay, so once we have the bliss powder, uh, we should then be almost there. We do need two lead. We need everything, actually, to make this. We, we don't have any of the items required. Uh, but two lead plates and one nickel gear really shouldn't be too difficult for us. Boom. And... Nice. Now, of course, for that to uh, to be any use for, uh, to us at all, we do, of course, need an Igneous Extruder, which, again, shouldn't be too difficult. I believe we do have quite a few of these um, machine chassis lying around. Yeah, we've got four more uh, ready to go. Um, I think I will, very quickly here, chat, teach my system how to... Uh, how to smelt glass. Because it's little things like this I would very much so like to be able to... Uh, not have to do myself going forward, right? So if we just get another uh, blank pattern here and uh, encode that, we can then throw that into our now very fast electric furnace. So now if we go glass and uh, let's say we wanted 100 glass, click start, and that should very, look how fast that's going. I love it. Okay, perfect. Yeah, it's making glass nice and quick. And uh, as of right now, that glass is being, or that sand, I should say, is being replaced um, over there, but hopefully very soon, it will be uh, being replenished by the uh, Igneous Extruder. So uh, let's see. Let's get another machine frame. Isaac of the Past coming in again there with the clutch. He made the uh, the copper gears. Capel. And there we go. Igneous Extruder. So the question becomes, where do I want to put this? And I think I'm going to put this over on this wall. I think this is where I'm going to have some of my um, thermal expansion machines. Because uh, I think we're also going to put the uh, the slag making system over here as well. It makes sense, right, to have the slag making system uh, near to the uh, the sand making system. So uh, we are going to have to make some upgrade kits for this guy, at the, at the very least one. But I think in real terms, we probably also want to get 
you know, more than one. We want to have a few upgrade kits to make it not only uh, able to make sand, but also able to make sand quickly. Now, uh, I do think that once again, this is probably a, um, a time where we should spend a minute making some patterns to teach our system how to make things like Invar as well. I am assuming that we can do that in the alloy smelter downstairs. Yeah, we totally can. Nice. So if we do that and encode, and again, we throw that in over here. We should then be able to request some invar. Again. And look at that. It's so fast. So the first upgrade kit here is going to allow us to actually put in the, uh, the sand making augment. We do want to make sure we actually select sand. There we go. And actually getting another one for gravel might not be a bad idea either because gravel's been another thing that we're kind of um, low on, right? Uh, so I might do that in the future. For now, though, let's get uh, some water and some lava in there, both of which we should have uh, in here. We do indeed. So that is now full on lava. We didn't. We don't need that much lava in there, but you know, there's no harm in putting that much in uh, either way. And then if we quickly grab a bucket, we could, of course, once again, utilize our water the seas there to, uh, to get that going. Now, actually, I'm a fool because uh, if we're going to make this work permanently, we do, of course, have to actually get an unlimited water source back here because water is the one thing that the system actively uh, actively uses. And so, you know, it's time for the uh, the end of war once again. We do have enough quartz glass, so it's just a cauldron and capel. Let's get uh, some more of those ender fluid conduits. I say some more, we just need the one. And then once again, one, two, three, four. You can go here, extract, always active. One. And two. Nice. So that should, hopefully, as soon as we provide it with power, be good to go. That should start making sand. And uh, I think for now, we might export the sand maybe just for like here. We'll have like a drawer or a cache like right here for that sand. And then we'll hook that up with a storage drawer. We could, of course, put like an import bus down as well. But I think for now, that's probably fine. Given that we're going to be working, um, I think, with the sand to make uh, slag over here as well. I think we should probably do it this way. Yeah, that should be fine. I need to fix the insert config for the water. It's insert by default, no? Does it need to be like blue here? Oh, yeah, it does. Why did that? Oh, yeah, no. You are correct. Make sure that's set to insert on the back there, and then we'll go put output on the uh, on the left. Uh, the reason there was water in there is that I put it in manually. That's my bad. And then, yeah, I think I'll put a cache down here. Caches are basically the same as uh, storage drawers, but less good. So now we just need to run our energy conduit over here. And I think, oh gosh, it's quite a big hold down anyway. Um, I think much like we did before, we're going to tap into our pre-existing P2P tunnel network. Right, if we're going to have a few machines over here, uh, much like we did last time, um, I think we'll run an energy conduit that kind of connects up over here. So when you run into a situation like this, like obviously what I want to do now is I want to run, I think a fresh cable over here, but I don't want to connect it to this cable because if you do this, then you run into some weird, some channel weirdness. Because although we have, you know, eight channels here and eight channels here, the fact that they're connected is uh, is awkward. However, thankfully, uh, Applied Logistics add these uh, cable anchors, which we've been using to make facades, but you can also use them like this to prevent two cables from connecting. And we can also put one there as well if we wanted to, you know, mirror it. So now these two won't connect and we can run a fresh line over this way with eight channels that are completely separate to, to this guy. Nice. Okay, so that should be making sand, albeit very slowly. Of course, if we wanted to upgrade it, we'd have to get more uh, upgrade kits. And uh, we definitely can make those. Yeah, we need some more Electrum, which we could, of course, now request. And we'd also need more Silver Gears. All right, so now we've got the uh, the reinforced upgrade on there, and we've got the uh, auxiliary reception coil augment in there. This is going a nice bit faster. It's obviously still not as fast as our Britannia setup, but the benefit is that it's going to be working constantly, and uh, we can, if we want, also actually put uh, upgrade kits into here as well. Like if I grab another uh, Invar upgrade kit, which I believe I do have the resources to make, uh, we can put that in like so, and now this can hold, I think, up to 8,000 sand. So uh, we should hopefully have like a nice backlog there 
of up to 8,000 cent. Um, I would like to put a storage bus on there. However, right now we are out of logic processors, which I think, chip, leads us nicely into the next thing that I want to automate, which I think is the advanced inscriber here. I think we want to make a few more advanced inscribers. And then from there, I think we want to look at automating uh, the production of all three processors. Those, of course, being the calculation, the engineering, and the logic. So, what's going to happen? We're going to hook this up. These three exporters are going to export diamonds, gold, and pure status quartz into these advanced inscribers. Those are going to be turned into logic, engineering, and calculation circuits. Those circuits are then going to be extracted on three different colored channels out the back here, round into three different mini chests. So the mini chests are each going to be holding one type of circuit that can hold up to 64 of each. Perfect. So we're going to have like a buffer of one stack of each circuit. Those are then going to be pulled out when the, a level is emitted. So when we, for example, let's say we want to hold a stack of each and every processor. When we run below a stack of logic processors, the logic circuits are going to be pulled out via the activation of this redstone signal into here. These are going to constantly be full up of redstone and silicon because over here, we're going to be constantly exporting silicon over here. That silicon is going to be made and it's going to be pulled out and stored in here. So these should always have silicon uh, presses ready to go. And then down here, we've got a little tiny chest holding redstone. That redstone is also being pulled out and stored in here. So these should always have both silicon and redstone ready to go so that when the uh, circuit comes in here, it can get made. And then finally, uh, it can be exported. And I guess what we'll do is we'll also have uh, these bottom cables extract and then pull out and around into another tiny chest with an import bus. That seems like the best solution, right? So the uh, the issue now comes connecting all this up. So we're using one, two, three, four, five channels, right? Yes. Now, of course, we do need to connect up the inscribers with uh, with power. I don't know if the inscribers can transfer power through each other. I'm going to assume they can, but I could be wrong on that. And uh, there is kind of like a weird, uh, unfortunately, like a weird bug with the uh, advanced inscriber and the advanced crystal growth chamber to where they kind of pop off the network if you connect them via normal cable. Ours popped off multiple times whilst uh, up here. Like often I'd come back on and I have to place these back down, uh, which is awkward. Uh, you can rectify that by not connecting them to the system, just giving them power through quartz fiber. So my hope is that if we can get some more uh, quartz fiber, which is going to require some more uh, quartz dust, which is going to require some more uh, nether quartz, because we are a bit low at the minute. Uh, but if we can get some more quartz fiber, I think we can, uh, can kind of rectify, hopefully rectify this issue. Yeah, the idea is we're going to do this and this, and then have like the cable, you know, connected between those so that uh, we can hopefully provide those guys with power without connecting to the, uh, them to the system and therefore hopefully not, uh, not messing things up. Now, we do have to hook this up to our main cable here. And uh, people did just point out, of course, that the uh, level emitters do also use channels. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine channels, which is, of course, somewhat awkward because that's one, one more than we can, uh, we can use. But that's fine. We can rectify that with a, uh, with a P2P tunnel and then use like a dense cable to, uh, to fill in the rest. The quartz fibers use channels. They do not know. Just like regular cables don't use, uh, don't use channels either. Quartz fibers are just cables that, uh, that don't transfer channels. They just transfer power. These transfer power and channels. These just transfer power. That's why you need uh, you know, the quartz fiber to make the actual uh, Flux cable, if that makes sense. So I think, like I said, what we'll do is we'll get another set of, uh, of P2P tunnels. We'll put one of these down on like a fresh interface, a fresh uh, controller face. Let's do it, you know, let's do it over here, actually. Let's get rid of this. No longer needed. And then, uh, oh, we've got the, uh, the dragon egg mill there, eh? Oh, no, we can do it, uh, yeah, no, we can do it like here. So we're going to have one P2P tunnel there. Bring that down. And then grab the old uh, memory card and make sure that's set with a shift right click. Perfect. And then over on the other side, of course, we're going to grab our P2P tunnel again. We'll put this one down. I think probably somewhere 
over here. I do want to use some dense cable coming out of this. So we're going to have this guy here. We're going to connect that up. So those are now connected. So we can store away the memory card. Uh, let's make another dense cable, at least one, maybe multiple if we can. Uh, we should be able to make more wool fairly easily with the uh, the fiber that we have in the basement, that being uh, over here. We should really hook those up to the system as well so we can make our, our string and therefore our wool more easily. And, you know, it's probably also a good idea to actually uh, teach our system how to make, you know, the, the wool automatically so we can uh, request it in the future. For now, though, let's make the remainder of those and then let's make the dense cable. And, of course, we'll make it smart as well. All right. So, that's going to come out there. And that can hook up to 32 channels, right? Uh, we do need more cable now, but that is fine. We should be able to make it. We can. And then from there, we just need to hook all this up, right? So, we need some of those channels to come over on the left side, which we'll do over here. Again, we want to try and keep these, uh, I think, somewhat separate so as not to uh, to overlap and, uh, and run out of channels but hopefully those should uh, should be connected and then we'll do the same over here we'll come out the other side for this and this and of course this and uh, yeah no, we'll try if we can to hook up like there and then of course like this okay so now it's a bit of a mess, just a tiny bit, but if we hook this up, I think we're onto something. All right, is that working? Oh, and of course, we do need... Uh, power across here as well actually lest we forget so you got to do uh, this and that to actually get the power across into there and it looks like that is working these are all uh, kaplunking away look at that gold is being exported diamonds are being exported uh, pure status quartz we don't have so we are gonna have to teach our system how to make that but those are all being exported uh, silicon of course we don't have yet so we are gonna have to teach you how to make that but uh hopefully this is all all working it is nice okay cool 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 so let me cover up the hole here and then let's quickly pivot on over to trying to uh to teaching our system how to make silicon so as far as silicon goes i still think that the best course of action is to process sand uh the question though is where do we want to process it up until now we've been doing it in the sand mill i think the sand mill is probably our best option going forward yeah Okay, so let's go. I'm going to, for now, I'm going to steal the sag mill we have up here. Uh, in the future, we'll probably make a new sag mill to replace this one. But uh, for now, let's go ahead and uh, maybe dump a few things out of our inventory. Including the uh, the pure status quartz, which is now going to be used uh, downstairs to make some more circuits. That's fine. And then I think what we'll do is we will have our sag mill probably just like right here. Because then what we can do is we can have this just pull the sand directly uh, from the sand cache. I think we of course want to put in our octatic capacitor and we of course want to hook this guy up with uh, with power. The question really is uh, whether or not I want to get like another cache and store that um, or do I want to store it in the system? I think what I'm going to do is we're going to use another level emitter over here uh, to uh, essentially tell this to stop once we have more than a certain amount of silicon because otherwise we're just going to run out of sand you put the cable here once again you do the old level emitter right there uh, we say this guy is active with signal and then we say you know this guy uh, emit a signal when we have less than Let's say 64 silicon, right? That should work. And then from there, we can just put another import bus on there. Import bus goes down there. Make sure this guy is well and truly dead. Good stuff. 
Uh, we hook up both of these to the pre-existing network. Might have to move uh, an energy conduit or two under here. But that should, I think, work, right? So long as the... Uh, Are we getting silicon? We are getting silicon, but the silicon's being exported, right? Yeah, okay, so that is working. When we get above 64, that should stop. It has stopped, beautiful. The silicon's gonna continue to pour in. Of course, right now, the silicon is being sent over here. Yes, uh, that does need to be connected up as well. So let's do uh, another quartz fiber, I guess. Make sure none of those actually uh, connect. Like that. There we go. Give that power. Okay. I think that we're onto something. We do need to do some, con uh, some channel configuring, I think, here. Because we need to... These need to be set to insert. Not extract. That way they're going to fill up with uh, with redstone and with silicon. Nice. There shouldn't be any silicon in here. We'll take that out. And then over here, we'll just set these to uh, emit levels when below. And I think 64 is probably a good number. So what processes do we have? We've got everything but logic. Okay, so we'll take calculation. And engineering, uh, we do need to check out which ones are which. So you are calculation. So over here, we're going to say when we have less than 64, calculation, make more. You are engineering. So when we have less than 64, engineering, make more. And then uh, we'll do the same, of course, with logic. But for now, we are going to have to get uh, one through manually here. Good stuff. And again, same idea. When we have less than 64 logic circuits, make more. So those all should be online. Of course, we could do with a lot more um, acceleration cards. Are you set to uh, insert? You're not. That's a, a very much so a problem there. Insert. Insert. And insert. There we go. Uh, we should see all of those come online. They are indeed beautiful. And uh, and then, like I said, we're going to do another thing here. We're going to have this one uh, insert on, let's say, white. And we're going to have all of these also extract on white. Always active. Always active. And always active. Okay. <laughs> so that should work, I believe. We should be constantly exporting the resources required to make the circuits, and then the circuits should be turned into processors as and when we need them. They should then be pulled down uh, into this little tiny chest here, and then this little tiny chest is connected to an import chest, or uh, an import bus even, that pulls everything back into the system. Uh, all the while, over here, we're constantly making silicon, uh, which is not only good for the processor setup there, uh, but it's also good because over here, if we wanted to now, uh, we could swap out the recipe for uh, this encoded pattern, uh, because right now it's using the electronic circuit and electron plates. Uh, we can go ahead and change that if we head on back up to central. And uh, we throw that pattern back in. We can go circuit, advanced circuit, advanced circuit board. We can use this recipe here using the silicon plate. Uh, so long as we teach our system how to make silicon plates, which are just silicon inside of the plate bending machine in code. And of course, that silicon is now being made for us over in the sag mill. So uh, we need you... I believe it was in here. And then the uh, plate bending machine is right there for you. That should continue to work and should now be cheaper and get us more. Over here, this does appear to be working. Uh, the one kind of hurdle is the uh, the creation of pure Certus Quartz. Because right now we don't have a way of continually making pure Certus Quartz. I don't know if it's going to be a huge deal because I don't know if we are going to need that many pure Certus Quartz crystals going forward. It's mainly logic and engineering that are kind of the big, uh, the big ones that we need a lot of. 
So I'm not going to worry about that too much just yet. If we do run into an issue where we don't have enough of those, then we can look, of course, at uh, at getting like the the process by which they're made automated. Uh, but for now, chat, I think really all we have to do is just cover up uh, this monstrosity that we've made here. And there we go. I think we have pretty much successfully automated at least the engineering logic processes uh, to make more of those. Uh, it is going to start uh, you know, running to our gold, which uh, is a problem given the amount of gold we have. Uh, we probably do definitely want to start looking and um, should have maybe done, been doing this for a while. Uh, it, uh, it's uh, processing our ores, right? Like we're not actually actively processing um, really any of our ores. Uh, we should definitely start looking at uh, automatically taking uh, at least all of the end ores and probably also a lot of the overworld ores. Uh, like I said, I think the only one that we really don't want to be processing is probably iron because we're going to be using that to make refined steel. But uh, for automation like this, it kind of relies on us having a, a steady supply of something like gold, which as of right now, uh, we do have, but we're not processing that gold effectively. So we're not really going to get uh, that constant supply that we need. Uh, but going forward, we should hopefully uh, be able to just craft most of the things from uh, applied energistics that we want to craft without having to uh, to manually craft them, right? Which is going to be uh, going to be very nice indeed. Um, I think that's probably where we're going to wrap things up for today. Uh, I'm still, you know, I've been debating it with chat. We're still hesitant on whether or not we're going to actually need to automate slag. Uh, we do have, you know, over 2048 slag up here. We might not need, and that gets us, you know, you get three uh, refined steel per slag. So that's like 6,000 refined steel. I don't know if we're going to need that much refined steel going forward. Um, I still do want to move some of our uh, ME interfaces and molecular assemblers down here at some point. But uh, for now, uh, we don't need that many recipes. So the one upstairs is kind of doing the job just fine. Uh, next time, like I said, we'll come back and we'll look at uh, more of these, I guess. I'm hopeful that next time we can come back and maybe get a, a tier three, if not a tier four void or miner. In fact, I might do that right now. How many? Although I don't think we have enough uh, crystals yet, right? Yeah, we still need like almost two stacks of, uh, of cryonite crystals. And before we can make the crystal lens, we still need 54 erodium crystals. So hopefully next time we have enough erodium crystals to make the crystal lens. That way we can get some more of these cryonite crystals, get upgrades to tier three, uh, and then finally to tier four. Because uh, really, chat, we kind of hit a bit of a bottleneck here because a lot of these f uh, future quests require uh, resources that we just don't have yet. We can't make them until we get um, a better, until we get uh, a higher tier resource miner. We need that tier four uh, resource miner to get it. Uh, we need things like uh, iridium and tungsten and like titanium or something like that. We need quite a lot of resources that we don't have access to yet. So we really can't do a lot of these kind of uh, future crafting quests until we have uh, that tier four miner. Hence why it's, you know, here in the uh, in the crafting chain. Uh, we might take a look at uh, doing maybe like the Gaia fight next stream or potentially getting the, uh, the Wither data model. Again, while we wait for this stuff to kind of, uh, you know, chug along and do its thing. Uh, but for now, guys, that is where I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's stream.